you were married for a year and a half. Right. And then one fine day, the Indo-Pak war breaks out. Right. It wasn't a fine day, let me tell I you. I know. It was a difficult day. Mm. I mean, I, I believe everybody knows how the war was and it's so far back in my memory that it's difficult to even want to think about it. But yes, trenches were dug in our houses and I was, he told me that I would be going away. But, uh, and we were posted in Ambala and the house was in line with the runway. runway. And Ambala, as we all know, was Ambala, the first hit, uh, yes, first, uh, first hit. bombing raids yes. came to Ambala. So I spent the first two, three days sitting in the trench, which were freshly dug, all ants around you. He had and told this me. the month of December. Ambala month of December, very, very third, December, third December, the war broke out. So that was an experience, but uh, even to look back, it was a horrible feeling, very honestly. I wasn't scared then. As I feel scared sometimes, thinking, thinking now why I didn't feel scared. By myself, every time there was sort of lull about the uh, sort of siren, I would go and sit in the veranda, I can sit. Otherwise, I was kind of on my haunches because you don't want to have your head above, above the, the level the of the thing. Yeah. Just in case there is a sharpnel kind mm. of a thing. And this is what all he had told me in preparation, not uh, in a classroom, but he said by and Take by that like you this, be careful, yeah. do like this, do like that. So I was trying to do that, keep a spoon or something in your mouth in case. So all that happened and it lasted for about three days. I mean, it lasted long, of course. But after three days, I got a message. Somebody came and said that, uh, sir has said that go back home. So I imagine that it was Vijay who said that go back home. It, I thought maybe it's going to last long. So I packed my bag and uh, those were the days when nobody asked you how to, would you reach the station mm, mm, and yeah. where is the ticket and how would you manage. So uh, the station was about two and a half, three kilometers from our, where we lived. So I walked with my bag in the middle of the night, barely got into the train because the stoppage was just two minutes. I reached Allahabad at about six o'clock in the evening and we heard the news on the television, on the radio actually, there were no televisions mm, those mm. days. And his name was read out. They were, they were just probably Indian uh, radio Prisoners. or, yeah. Hmm. And Pakistan radio had very sort of, we were able to catch somehow. And they were reading out some names. And I heard his name and two or three names that we could catch. One was his name. So I was, my mother in fact said, why, why are they taking his hmm. name? I said, mommy, maybe they have, he has been imprisoned or something. They have captured him. But uh, I'm he's happy. Alive. Yeah, he's yeah, alive. He's alive. And he doesn't have to take part in the war anymore. Of course, a very selfish kind of a thought, but I thought it was like that. And I convinced my mother also. So we thought it, everything is okay. And when the war gets over, that was only the third mm. or fourth day. Mm. Mm. And the war ended and what happened after that, Simla agreement, etc. And then repatriation started. And then we got to know that quite a few people are there and they would be coming back. So we were told on the third train, when the third train comes, the missing people or people whose names are there, mm, mm. they were expected to come. But nothing of the sort happened. Anyway, my father-in-law came, met me and he said, uh, what are you doing? You keep yourself occupied. By chance, luckily there was a vacancy in Jawaharlal Nehru University for the sports uh, position, sports director. I applied and I got the job and the same year I was, it was announced that I'll get the Arjun Puras award. Wow. So the year you lose yeah. is the year you, you get You lose one trophy and you get another. 